Today, we're going to talk through a few things that you'll want to keep in mind as you build out a data structure for a multi-tenant environment in Bubble. Multi-tenant just means that you're going to have organizations come to your app, right? So these are the primary users, and they're going to use the app within their organization only. So there's not going to be any data that crosses between organizations. Because of this, it's really important for you to create the right architecture for the data so that things are protected. We don't want members of one organization to be able to access data from another organization. Of course, you can create more granular permissions at a user level beyond this, but we're gonna take a look at what your options are so you can see what path makes the most sense for your app. It's Gabby over at Coaching No Code Apps where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps to launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. Now, when it comes to building out a multi-tenant structure in Bubble, you actually have two different paths that you can take. You can either build everything out within a single application. So this is one database that is shared between all of your organizations, or you can use Bubble's sub app system, which enables you to create independent applications for each of your organizations. And because they're independent apps, every organization gets their own database. So right away, we can see a few obvious pros and cons between the two. With a single application, you're much more responsible for creating the right privacy rules to protect the data from leaking between organizations. You have to make sure that every single table, every single user is accounted for when it comes to reading data or making changes to data. Now, a single application is much more lower maintenance compared to a sub app because everything is just happening in one application. Your logic is always gonna refer to the one app. Now let's compare this to sub apps. Sub apps mean that you have a separate application per organization. And because they're separate applications, you're gonna have separate databases. This creates a built-in security right out of the gate. You don't have to do anything because when a user logs into their organization's app, the only database they have access to is that app's database. Now, of course, you can create connections between applications using plugins and API connections, but that would be a very intentional connection that you would, of course, need to be aware of any security around that as well. But with that built-in separation between apps, a lot of the heavy lifting is done for you in terms of security. Now, sub apps are higher maintenance compared to a single app system. Uh, there's more logic that you'll have to consider so that all the functionality works no matter what application the user is in. Uh, because sub apps are separate applications, they're all going to be on their own domain. So that's something that you'll want to keep in mind, especially if you have integrations involved with your functionality. There's also a cost factor that you want to consider here. Every individual sub app has to be on its own individual plan. Now you do have control over putting sub apps on different plans depending on the usage of each organization, but it is something that you're going to have to maintain long term. Now I want to break these two paths down a little bit further. So we'll start with a single app structure. With a single app, you're working on one application, which means one database where everything is shared. Okay, so it's up to you to create the right structure and rules around all of that structure to make sure that data is separated properly between your organizations, even though everybody is logging into the same app and technically accessing the same database. What you wanna do here is create an organization data type. This is gonna store all the top level information about that organization can be their name, can be any branding, logos, colors, okay? Any particular features that that organization should have access to or not, if you're gonna have like a subscription system for your business model. But this data type is really important for creating the right relationships and privacy rules to separate the data. As long as all of the other data types in your database relate back to the organization, you have everything you need to lock things down. You want to pay close attention to your privacy rules and really leverage this in your structure. Without these rules, you are going to risk data leaks between organizations. A single app structure makes things really easy to search the entire database. There might be cases where you do want users to search across organizations, even if it's just you as a complete system admin, to gather everything from all of your organizations. It's easy to search because it's one single database. You don't have to communicate with an external service. However, speed of those searches can decline if each one of your organizations is adding a high, high volume of records, right? So you do want to think a bit strategically here about the volume of activity and the volume of data that's gonna be added to the database, not just structurally, but performance-wise. What's gonna make sense for you long-term? Now, we like to recommend starting out with a single app structure no matter what. 
you can always transition to a sub-app structure later on. You'll see why in a second. So looking at the sub-app structure, there's a clear difference in the separation between the apps, right? Because we have multiple apps. Every app has its own database. And so naturally things are separated. You can't accidentally cross data between your applications. Now you can share data if you want. That has to be done through an API connection. Um, there are various plugins that can help you with this. But at the end of the day, the underlying structure of all of your tables within the app to support your functionality, all of the individual tables should still work like a single app, right? Your images need to tie back to an organization. Your messages need to tie back to an organization. Your users need to tie back to an organization. We actually still recommend having that organization data type so that you can save all of the white labeling details to that organization. Remember, a sub app uh, means that it is derived from primary. So you're still going to build out everything, all the logic in one application, and you're simply going to deploy those changes to all of the sub apps independently. You're never going to edit your sub apps independently. So it's up to you to create the right dynamic logic to display the right information from a dynamic database to the users in the front end. Having that organization data type, even though we know an independent app only relates to one organization, is still gonna be super helpful for creating that white labeling logic. Privacy rules are of course still recommended for all of the other permissions you need to create in your application, especially user level permissions. Your users may have roles, right? Some users should be able to read data versus edit data versus create data. Okay, so your privacy rules are still gonna be very helpful for that. Because some applications are going to exist on their own domains, the domain itself is gonna become much more relevant for user access, okay? So perhaps these are companies where users can only sign up if their email address matches the company domain. And that can lead to different functions and flows and data access uh, within the application. Perhaps the company has guest users that are allowed to sign up, but again, depending on their domain, understanding that they're a guest, they're not actually a part of the company, they may have restricted access to certain data. Now with a sub app structure, your overall performance can be more efficient for you because each application works independently. Like I said before, you can control the different plans that these apps are on. If the usage of an organization is much higher, you can put them on a higher plan that has more app capacity. And because each application is independent in their database, the searches can be more efficient simply because the amount of data is less per app. Now, on the other side of that, if you wanted to pull data from all of the applications into one place, there's a little bit more work there. You do need to create API connections to retrieve that data from those separate applications. Or if you wanted to go in the other direction, if you wanted to make something happen from one central place and push that to all of the sub apps. Now, I'd like to go through a few common use cases for single app structures and the sub app structures. Keep in mind, these are absolutely not the only use cases, and you can find uh, these use cases being used in the other system. It really just depends on the volume of data that you're working with, um, industry requirements that you're building for. Some industries have to have white labeled separate databases, and so you're kind of forced to use a sub app system. Um, also consider where you're at in your app's development. If you're just getting started, like I said, we usually recommend starting out with a single app just to begin with. And you can always transition to the sub app system because uh, the underlying architecture is going to be incredibly similar anyway. So when it comes to single applications, one of the most common use cases is marketplaces where the end user needs to be able to search across all organization data that has been generated in the application. Take Etsy as an example. Shop owners will sign up to Etsy to create a shop and add in their products, create listings, and sell products on this platform, right? So the shops are all of the individual organizations, but all of that data is being housed in one central database. That way the end user, right, the customer, the person who's shopping around can search very easily across all shops for whatever product it is that they're looking for. The shops are all hosted on one domain, Right? They do have custom uh, dynamic pages, I should say, for each of their listings. So things come up in SEO results, uh, okay, and they can share those links easily. But at the end of the day, they're all on one shared platform. They still represent themselves. All of the data tied to that shop is unique to the shop. Their listings, their products, their transactions, their customers, uh, notifications, all of that information. 
But because the end user needs to be able to do an app-wide search across these organizations, it makes much more sense for all that data to be housed in one place. Now, of course, you can build a marketplace system in a sub-app environment, especially when it comes to B2B to C uh, connections. Now, for sub-apps, there might be some characteristics of your functionality that could make this decision really obvious for you. The first is a fully white-labeled experience uh, for the domain, okay? So with a single application, everything lives on one domain. But with a sub-app system, because these are independent apps, they all have to be on their own domain. They don't have to be on a subdomain. They can be completely unique domains from one another. Now, a great example for this is if you're building an application for a large organization that has franchise locations. And each franchise is going to be on its own domain. So you're essentially creating the sub apps for each individual franchise. This allows the manager of that franchise or the owner of that franchise to customize their experience for their sub app only. And it doesn't have to affect how the other franchise owners operate, but they're all under the larger umbrella of the organization, of the business, right? The main business. This way, the franchise data is housed in one independent database that's not going to be crossed with other franchise databases. This also works really well for HR management systems for an enterprise that is present in multiple countries. So for example, you could create a sub app for every individual country's uh, subdivision of that larger enterprise. I also like to call out functionality that involves a lot of file heavy features. So uploading a lot of files, um, storing them with specific access to files uh, can make a big difference in not just the performance, but also the security around this data. Keep in mind that file storage in bubble apps is something that you'll have a limit on based on your plan. You can also increase your, your storage size there. Uh, but again, if you have sub applications, then every individual organization can, can be on its own plan and therefore you can control the file storage per organization so that it makes sense for their usage. Now, I'm certainly not suggesting that you have to use sub apps whenever you're working with hot file heavy features, uh, but there are just some things to consider there. You can, of course, create all of the rules and restrictions you need within a single app environment as well. Again, no matter what path you're going down, whether it's a single app system or the sub app system, you want to make sure you build out that top level organization data type. That's the key to everything. That's going to allow you to connect all of the other tables to a single organization record so that you can create all of the rules you need around accessing data properly. This type of multi-tenant structure is an application a lot of our own clients build, and many of them have started with our free workshop over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop. This training will walk you through all of the planning, no-code tools, and development strategy you need in order to start building your app. So join for free at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop.